Hey there, folks. This is Eric Metaxas' show. I'm talking to George Saris about his book, Heaven's Doors. Uh, the subject is hell, although you said it was uh, heaven. You, you go into the definitions of, of a lot of the words in your book, which is another reason that I respect you, even though I'm not sure if I agree with your ultimate conclusions. I, I was fascinated that I'd never read this before. Um, even to look at the different meanings where it says hell in Scripture, uh, you know, that word could be Gehenna, it could be Hades, it could be Tartarus, it could be... What are, what are those different words? What do they mean? Yeah, that's a good question. In fact, it's kind of interesting because the word that is normally translated hell in the modern versions, Gehenna, that is translated as hell, Gehenna was a dump. It was a dump outside of Jerusalem. It, it refers to the Valley of Hinnom or the Valley of the Sons of Hinnom in uh, the earlier times in the Old Testament. Um, and it was a place where I think it was Ahaz and uh, Manasseh had uh, offered child sacrifice. And so Josiah comes along, he desecrates uh, the valley, and uh, it became a common dump for the, the uh, city of Jerusalem where they put dead bodies of uh, criminals, animals. You had uh, worms, you had fire there to purify that's what the fire was there for. That's what the worms were there for. They were there to purify this unholy place. And so it's really, you know, it's interesting because in the time of Jesus, Gehenna was a place you could go visit. Uh, we just have a few minutes left. George, what should we add to this conversation? One of the things I say in my book is that God's love is unconditional. God's power is irresistible. And he never gives up. And I think that one of the key things is looking at the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is fascinating. Most people look at it as if this is what's going on in hell. Actually, what's happening in Revelation happens on earth until the very end of the book before you get into anything that's even after earth. All the plagues, all these other things are happening on earth. They're not talking about the future uh, in hell. But in uh, chapter 5, John says, Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Who is it that's proclaiming this? Every creature. Where are they? Everywhere in creation. What are they doing? They're praising the God of heaven and the Lamb. Um, then at the end of the book of Revelation, which is really fascinating, the gates of the New Jerusalem are never shut. The tree of life, it's always bearing fruit. The, uh, the leaves from those, uh, the, the trees are for the healing of the nations. There's no longer any curse. There's no longer any more tears. And then the invitation is given. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. Well, who are they saying come to? those outside the city because the gates are open. Who's outside the city? Those who are in the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a refiner's fire that purifies. I can I talk about that more in my book. But the bottom line is they are invited to come into the new Jerusalem because the bride are the, the, the believers that are already there. The spirit is already there. Who are they giving the invitation to? Those outside the gates who are allowed to come into the gates of the new Jerusalem. Wow. The highest compliment I can say is this really makes me think. Uh, and it's just so fascinating to me. I keep saying that this is such a, a hot button issue, no pun intended. So even though I'm not endorsing your position, I I'm allowing you to present it because I read the book and I've known you personally, your faith. You're, you're not some quote unquote liberal Christian. And so I thought, hmm, interesting. And you actually care about what the scripture says because you believe in the in inerrancy of scripture. That is usually not the position of a universalist. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Most of the people that I talk to are, are just kind of shocked that I, uh, I actually believe in Scripture. I, the, the pastor of the church that we ended up going to, uh, I went up to him the, the very first Sunday that we were there, and he wanted to know why we were there. And I thought I might as well mention to him what's, what happened. Right. And he said, George, I've never heard that position from a biblical perspective. Right. I would love to talk to you about it. So for the next several months, he would take 20 pages at a time, and uh, <laughs> wow. we would end up reading, uh, meeting together, and we would talk over those 20 pages and uh, for a couple hours at a time, because he was fascinated by what was well, there. Well, I, I confess that I am fascinated, so I want to thank you, George, for helping open up the conversation. It's a privilege, and I'm very, very grateful. The book we've been talking about is titled Heaven's Doors by George Saris. This is the Eric Metaxas Show. Go to metaxastalk.com. Oh, yeah.